Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Let's put our hands together and praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Pentecost Sunday. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to our risen King. Yes. We are so excited because we understand that this is a holy day. Yes. And we are celebrating the Lord. Yes. Another day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to first welcome. day. With us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Well, I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nicholas And I am Bishop Dennis Manning. And we are the pastors of Love of Jesus Deliverance Evangelistic Center Community Church. We know that our God lives and he reigns forevermore. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to get started in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you for Pentecost Sunday. You died on the cross for our sins and our iniquities. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you paid the price on Calvary. We just want to say thank you for early morning rising the blood yet running warm through our veins, the activities of our limb. Holy Ghost, you are welcome in this place. Use us for your glory. Take us down into the storehouse. Bring us up into the Old and to the New Testament. Have your way today. We love you. We go and fire you. We honor you. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our opening scripture is coming from the book of Psalm, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Once again, welcome. We thank God for each and every one of you that are here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. 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 Oh, like the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Oh, like the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Oh, fire, 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 fire fall on me. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. Oh, like the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Oh, like the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Glory to your wonderful name. Lord, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for this Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your mercies that are due every morning. We thank you for allowing us to assemble ourselves in this place, oh God, on this holy moment, in this holy time, oh God. We thank you for the son that you have given us, oh God, Jesus, oh God, that came into this world, gave of himself as a ransom, paid the price for us so that we can celebrate. Oh God, we thank you, Father God, that you allow for your spirit, oh God, to dwell on the earth and dwell on the inside of us so that we can reign and live life abundantly while we are yet alive. Yes. Father, we ask that you give us a word, oh God, yes. or from on high. Help us, oh God, to hear what you're saying. Yes. Take out all distraction, carnal thinking, oh God, and let us hear your voice. Father, you are the potter, I am the but the clay. Yes. Take me out of the flesh, oh God, put me into the supernatural, so that those who have an ear to hear will be changed, transformed, and renewed by your word. Father, we bless you, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, come on church, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank glory you. to God. Now, if you were with me on Thursday night for Bible study, I was talking about Pentecost. If you didn't get a chance to see it, go back on YouTube. Love of Jesus, uh, Love of Jesus Deliverance Online Church. If you can look that up on YouTube and you can get that message 
But I need for us to go a little bit deeper. And I know we come from the book of Acts chapter 2 when we talk about Pentecost Sunday. But I need for us to understand how God puts things together and how he does things for his children so that we can celebrate and so that we can honor him. The reason why I said we're white, I know traditionally we were white for Pentecost, but we need to come with our best. We need to come representing and letting others know who we serve, and we need to be let that be an expression. Now, Pentecost uh, in, in uh, Judaism is considered or called Shabbat. Now, Shabbat basically is a time, a holy time, and it's in reverence or it's in reflection to agriculture and harvest. It also is a holy convocation. Once again, that's the whole reason why those of you who are here, I press the point of wearing right white. Because this is actually holy convocation. Somebody say holy convocation. Holy okay, when we come together in holy convocation, we come with our minds on one accord. How many people honestly fasted on Friday? All right, Saturday, you can conclude it, okay? So everybody should be in sync and in the spirit. If you come in here to be entertained, I'm not here to entertain you and do that. Because if that was the case, I would have went to Hollywood, and I would have made my way through Hollywood, so I could have got paid for it. But we come to work together in the spirit. Everybody should be on one accord. You say you fasted, right? You said you prayed, you studied your word. So now we come on holy convocation to receive a fresh anointing and a fresh wind from the Holy Ghost from on high. So we're not coming to look. The white is beautiful, but we're not coming to look at what kind of white we got on. We came because this is a celebration. It's holy convocation, and we are expecting for God to give us a fresh wind. How many are you expecting to get a fresh wind? Come on, come on, come on. I need you all to participate. Don't get easily distracted. People walk around, people, I need for people to get settled and situated. Do what you got to do. Get settled, settled and situated so we can focus on the word. Okay, Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus 23, 21. Because I'm not going to be before you long. Because what God got to do, he's going to do it. And right quick. Amen? Amen? 23, 21. It says, And he shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. This is something that was made by God and it was set up and arranged by God for all of those who he has called his children, meaning for generations to come. This is a celebration and this is something that is supposed to be continued down through the ages. It just doesn't stop and then that's just it. But it's supposed to be continued down through the ages. It marks the beginning of the grove harvest that took place in Israel. It was 49 days counted, and then on the 50th day, it was the Feast of Weeks, and then that time it was celebrated, and you can look at Leviticus 23, go to 15, Leviticus 23, 15 through 16, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the way offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall be number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. How many of us are ready to offer a new thing unto the Lord? Amen. Okay. Yeah. See, see, whenever we want for God to do something in our life, and, and you know, God's mercies are new every morning. But when we want or expecting something, we're planning, we're asking God to help us in our business, we're helping God, to asking God to help us to finish a book, a project, whatever it may be. Whenever you ask for God to do something, you got to put some time in. Yeah. You got to do some work. Yeah. So they did work, and then on the 50th day, that's when they said, okay, it's time to give a new offering, a new meat unto the Lord. Some of us have some stale praises, and that's why I tell you all, I, I don't care how old you get. As long as you have the ability of your voice, if you can just do this and just wave your hand, whenever you assemble with yourselves, you ought to always give God praise. It's not a time to look. It's not a time to spectate. It's time to give God glory because what are you doing? You're giving him a new offering of yourself. You're asking God to do something for you. Then you have to do a new thing. That's why you're praying. Say, give me a new song. Ask God to give you a new song. Ask God to give you a new praise. So if you're always sitting like 
like this. Bishop said, don't try to kick God. Some people just do like this. Some people just look. You need to, if you need to take a handkerchief out, get the handkerchief out and wave it. If you need to get you some more rappers, get some more rappers and shake them. But whatever you do, you should bring a new offering and a new praise unto the Lord. Amen. We're getting too complacent. Yeah. And we're not understanding this thing. So many of us, we keep saying to ourselves, well, why am I still stuck in this place? Because we don't have the true understanding of the things that God has established for his people. Pentecost, Shabbat is for his people. God does exchanges with us. He's a God of relationship. He's a God when you when, when you give, he said, okay, I'm going to give it back. When you put out God say, oh, I see that. Now I'm going to give you favor. When you move it and be obedient, obedience is better than sacrifice. God says, I'm going to bless you beyond what you can think, imagine, or believe. Amen. See, every time we come into the presence of God, we should come with a fresh, a fresh attitude. Amen. With a new praise. Yes. With an excitement. Yes. yes. We can no longer just sit on God and then just keep thinking things are going to happen. No. Some of us get into that little tantrum. Well, ain't nothing moving for me. Ain't nothing shaking. What? Where's your new offering Glory. unto God? What have you? Asked? What freshness have you given unto God? Some of us are getting into a place where we think we're we're cynical. We're cynical. Oh, I've been in church all my life. You ain't all that. You better believe when you serve the Most High God, it's all that this. Amen. And that's the attitude you need to take every time you come into His presence. Yes, yes. Shabbat over the years, it lost its agricultural tradition at the Bar Kova revolt uh, occurred in 135 AD. 985 villages were destroyed and 50 fortresses. There were 580,000 Jewish lives that were lost during that revolt. So the rabbi said, okay, we need to bring this thing into having a greater significance. As the Jewish people began to become, I would say, more uh, 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 urban, so to speak, in that time, they began to focus on the Torah and how God gave the people the Torah. Now, the Torah was given to all nations, but Israel was the one that accepted the discipline commands. They were the ones that said, okay, Lord, this is what you said to do. But the Torah was offered to all people. Let me tell you something. God offers what he has for each and every person. It's up to you to make the decision to discipline yourself to receive it. Amen. Amen. God has no respect of person. When it rains, it rains on the unjust as well as the just. When the sun shines, the sun shines just, or it shines on the just as well as the unjust. Therefore, if you want to be in the number, if you want to be a part of the plan, you have to be able to accept the directions and the command that God is giving you. Yes. Some yes. of us, we don't want that. Some of us say, I like my hand pops. I like my fat bag. <laughs> my cornbread with a pound of butter. I'm not giving. Some people, some people literally have told me, I'm not giving that up. Amen. Fasting is too hard. I pray, I, I study, but no, Jesus fasted. Yes. Remember, he went away, so he's, he's still away 40 days, 40 nights, he fasted and prayed, right? Amen. He prayed. Where, when, when he was a, a little boy, and he went with was in the temple. And asked, what you do? He said, I'm about my father's business. So if Jesus had to do it, and we follow Jesus, guess what? The plan, you have to follow it too. You have to fast, pray, and read your word. Now, I know some people say, I can feel their spirit. Well, I'm on medication. You don't take medication all day, all day long. You don't eat all day. Something wrong with every hour of the day. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. You have to fast, pray, and read your word. All three things. It's a combination that helps to edify your spiritual being so that you can move forward in the things that God is calling you to do. So that you can move forward and live life abundantly. So that you can have clarity of thought in your mind. Some of us don't have visions and dreams no more. Now, I'm going to tie this in or up, up until now. I'm going to tie it in on how we're supposed to have visions and dreams. Some people stop having visions and dreams. Why? Because you're not fasting and praying. You're not even studying the word of God. Amen. Some of y'all saying, oh, I remember such and such many years ago. I heard from God. Let me tell you something. If you're not hearing from God, it's because you have allowed for yourself to become stagnant and complacent. Yes. The prophets, when they lived, 
They lived up until old white ages, and God was using them all the way until it was time for them to carry them home. I, listen, age don't mean anything as long as you have the breath of God in your body, where you're able to wake up in the morning, where then he's able to start you on your way. You are able to do what God is calling you to do. The prophets, they were old when they passed this earth and transitioned on to glory. And they prophesied and they did what God told them to do. They went where God told them to go all the way up until the time when they expired. We too as men and women of God living in this time and age, we need to work while it is yet day. Some people try to say, oh, that's for young people. No, it's not. Every time you get a day, you need to work it. Every time God allows you to see a sun, the sunrise, you need to work that day. Amen. There is work that yet that needs to be done. People are acting as if you know everybody in the world and everybody in the United States knows who Jesus is. No, they don't. Some people were presented Jesus and they were presented the gospels or they were presented church in the wrong way. So those of us who have the light of God truly living on the inside of us, it's our responsibility to go out and still proclaim the gospel. Go out and still tell people that God still saves, delivers, heals, and sets free. That's our responsibility and our commission that God has given us to do. So therefore, the rabbi said, okay, let's turn this around and let's focus in on the Torah. And they suggested that the Shabbat be the day the Torah was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Shabbat then became known as Ziman Natan Torah Tenu, the time of the giving of our law. Let me tell you something. I thank God that he's a God of one of decency and order. I thank him for his laws. I thank him for his commandments because so many people, they get stuck on what they cannot do. The laws and the commandments of God show us that we are free. It, because it takes us from the carnal world where if you don't have to give and commission yourself and your being over to this world that causes for you to be demised. The wages of sin is death. And the things of this world, without the order and without the laws of God, we will just, just give ourselves over to any and everything. Some people allow for themselves to fall into sorcery, witchcraft, all of these different things. They're going to the soothsayer, listening to the tarot card reader, and they're doing all of these things, and they're not content, and they're not happy. You know why? Because that's the that's not the way God designed it to be. He has this the, the time of Shabbat, this time that He gave us the giving of the giving of our law. It says our law. Because you know what that law does? It brings us into come on, I'm hitting it, just follow me. It brings us into a place of being on one accord. Amen. Come on, y'all follow me. Come on, come on. I should have that in the spirit. Yeah. Our law. It yeah. means our law because the law that God has assigned between him and his children is to help us along the way. It's to help us to get to the next level. It's to help us to get from glory to glory. Amen. So now we're in this place where God has called us, where if we focus in on our law, the law that he established so that we can live a good life. See, because the law is going to bring you to death. It don't. It, it say what? Commit not adultery. I know a lot of people who commit adultery. You see with somebody else, spouse, or what have you. Somebody get mad. Some somebody either got to be locked up or somebody's killed. It happens all the time. So why would somebody say, "Oh, that's a hard law to follow"? Something wrong. It say, "Thou shalt not steal." Okay, people that steal, you get busted, you get locked up, you're incarcerated, you put in this little old cell, you got to stay there for a certain amount. That's bondage. You want to do? Why is it hard to not steal? That's not anything difficult to do. Thou shalt not lie. You get caught up in a lie, you go to court, you get perjury, they'll lock you up. Who wants to be locked up? You, you have to understand that these laws were, were, were created to keep you out of the clutches of the enemy. See, because what the devil does, he will set you up. He'll make something look good and right. Oh, she wants she's fine. No, you're married. But your eyes over here look, oh, she, ooh, she beautiful, she alive. Woo! His muscles, ooh, look at that, this, that. You got yours. Don't come in, don't come back nobody else's stuff. Because you looking over there, that person could be out of their mind, they could be crazy. That person could have an agenda to set you up so that you can be destroyed. 
name off and everything else, drag through the mud. You can, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he will do any device he can. Don't get caught up. The laws, our laws, that God has given us is so that we can what? Live life abundantly. What does the law do? It brings us in sync. When you meet another man of God, when you meet another woman of God, it brings us in one accord because you know what we understand. When, when, when something is not right and you're in an atmosphere and something demonic is going on, people of God, what do we do? We start pleading the blood of Jesus. We start calling on the Lord. We start rebuking him. You know why? Because we're on one accord because the spirit of God on the inside of you and the spirit of God on the inside of me. We are coming together. We are joining forces because we already understood the law. We know what it means to pray. We know what it means to fast. We know what it means to study the word of God. It, we know what it means to assemble ourselves. So all of these practices that we do, all of these things, the law that God created, it was for us to have a better life. Not to fall into how the carnal world is doing things. So we have to get out of this, uh, 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 this mindset of thinking, oh, I can't be a believer because it's too hard. No, it's not. I don't know about you, but it's a good thing. You don't have to keep looking over your shoulder right. wondering what's going to happen That's because maybe right. you lied about something or you did something you wasn't supposed to be doing. It's cool to say this sets free. They are free indeed. Amen. It's good to have that freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. The presence of the Spirit of God has been present in the, in the earth from the beginning of time. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 it specifically lets us know that the presence of God was already there. His spirit was already there in the earth. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they are three in one. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 says and the earth was with but form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. It specifically says the spirit of God. Bezei Atlel was in architecture and a craftsman, and he was given God's wisdom to build the tabernacle. You can see that in Exodus 31, 1 through 5. God gave him wisdom. The Spirit of God was upon him to show him how to build the tabernacle. In Numbers 11, 16 through 17, Numbers 11, 16 through 17, the Spirit of God settled on the leaders when they needed uh, a, how, uh, a knowledge on how to administrate in the kingdom. The Spirit of God came upon them to give them wisdom and knowledge. The Spirit was on the men who were called to prophesy. Isaiah 61 and 1, Ezekiel 2, 1 through 4. They, the Spirit of God was there to use them to show them what to say and how to say it in their times of challenges with those who were coming up against them because they were living a righteous life. All of this is to show you the Old Testament connects with the New Testament and all the Word of God connects with us now. The Spirit of God still is powerful. The Spirit of God is still alive and well. And those of us who are always saying, oh, we need a revival. Oh, we need, we, 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 we need this and the other. We ask God to revive you. That's right. See, because you should already feel the fire when you get around other men and women of God. When you come into your church house, you should be coming with a two-step. You should be coming with a praise without nobody got to pull you and anybody trying to push you. It should be automatic. Because you've been in your prayer closet. You've been seeking the face of the Father. It all connects. Look with me at John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Actually, uh, 14, 16 through 17. Let's start at the 16 verse. And it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Come on, somebody say, he's in me. He's Come in on, me. say it like you know him. He's, he's in, in me. me. See, because when you know that the Spirit of God is in you, you're not going to want to do those things that's not of God. You're not going to want to gossip. You're not want, you're not gonna want to be in the seat of the scorpion. You're not gonna want to go to places that don't represent the kingdom of God. 
You're going to have a longing and a desire to live a righteous life. Why? Because it tells us that he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's what Jesus told the disciples. And that word for the disciples is for us now. That he already has prayed for us. He, he told the disciples, I will pray the Father and he shall give you a comforter. And he has given us the Holy Spirit yes. so that we can thrive through life. I don't like people who sit with their heads down and they always complain in it. They always say, oh, ministry is hard. Get out of it. Because the joy of the Lord should be your strength. And the yes. power of God, I know sometimes things get a little hard. And sometimes a little things get a little testy. But it shouldn't keep you in a place where you feel like giving up. Because yes. God did not create yes. us to give up. He created us to win. Why? Because we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. So we got to have the understanding that we were made the way God formed us. And the way God made us, he made us to win. To be the head and not the tail. Yeah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 through 14. And whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, yeah. which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Yeah. See, there, there is a, a action uh, to every, there is a reaction to every action. God made this thing active for us. God made this thing, that this word right here that we're reading right now, this is a living document. It moves and it grows with us. It grows us. It challenges us. It restores us. It lifts us up. It molds us. It's a living document to let you know that God, remember I read it in Genesis, the Spirit was with us in the beginning and he is going to be with us even until the end of time. Therefore, we have to walk this walk like we know it. We got to talk this talk like we know it. You know what? I, you, I, I gotta say this. I was so disheartened. I was seeing um, a, a, the documentary on Hillsong. And I love Hillsong praise music. But when I saw that documentary, it really hurt my heart. I'm praying for that pastor. I'm praying for the founder that started that ministry because they were doing such a great work. But when you do not allow for the spirit of God to direct you, it tells us that the comforter is going to be there to direct you. Jesus left the comforter to give us the truth that we need with the Holy Spirit of promise. So that we will be able to have that possession unto the praise of his glory. When we do things for our own sake, without honoring God, without giving him his due glory, we are setting ourselves up for destruction. Pride coming before fall. What is pride saying that you are beyond whatever God has to do in, in, as far as giving you direction? As far as giving you what you're supposed to do, you're going on your own will. And now what happened? Destruction. Yes. Now what happened? There's a fall. Yes. Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. They got they got fooled by the enemy, the serpent. Yes. That prideful spirit. Oh, I got knowledge. Oh, let me cover myself up. God said, I see you. What are you covering up? I, I still see you. Yes. Look what foolish is the yes. thing that we can hide from God. He's oh, omnipresent. God. Omnipotent. We can't hide from God. So whatever steps we take, we have to make sure that as believers, we stay in tune with this word. See, because when the spirit of God is on the inside of you, because I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you see something that look good. And you know, you ooh, it look good. It could be, a, a, it could be some clothes. And you know you got your budget. God has showed you how to work things out. It could be everything already. You see something and you want to splurge. The Holy Spirit will tell you, keep on walking. Yeah. Keep on walking. Get your eye, uh, the lust of the eye. Turn your eye to the, the, any other direction. Move it. Keep moving. The Holy Spirit will, the option of the Holy yeah. Spirit will move you on. Yeah. Keep moving. This is not a me. Uh-uh. You fasting and praying. Oh, but I gotta go to the supermarket. I gotta get my kids. They will much meet this, that, other. You see your little favorite snack. Wow. You stand there, you stand. Oh Holy Spirit said, Move it, move it. You got to. The Holy Spirit is going to talk to you. Yes, yes, when you are a child of God and you really have dedicated yourself and disciplined yourself to the will of God, He will tell you when you're in a place where you're contemplating whether I should or whether He said, The Spirit of God 
best one to lead you to the truth. No other man who's married should be looking at another woman. No other woman who's married should be looking at another man. I'm not going to say you ain't going to see some pretty things because God can stand you like it's beautiful. You won't see it, but you got to turn your head. You won't see it, but you got to walk the other way. You can't stick your eye on it because it's not pleasing in the sight of God. Because when you allow for your flesh to stay true to what you're trying to be enticed by, you're going to fall prey to the enemy. See, we got to, we got to talk this thing out. We got people that say, oh, therapy is a beautiful thing. Find you, uh, find you a believer who is a therapist. It's a beautiful thing because they know how to take the word of God and show you insight. It's nothing wrong with getting that therapy. A lot of people are twisted and messed up because they won't go and get help. Go get your help. Get the help that you need. Because you know what? It, it's at the time, the age that we're living in, we're coming, we should be at a place where we see one another fall. We should pick our brothers and sisters yes. up. You know, you're coming off the path. Yes. Come, come on, don't do that. Yes. So that we keep one another strong. But what we do? Oh, did you hear what happened That's in such true. and such? So? Or did you say this? That? No. What happened to reaching out and saying, no, well, I'm going to pick my brother up. I'm going to pick my sister up. I'm not going to lie to me. I'm uh -uh, not so. How many of you honestly pray and fast? For your loved ones who fallen by the wayside. How many of you taking that time to really say, Lord, I'm calling out such and such. I'm calling out my niece. I'm calling out my nephew. I'm calling out my friends. The devil will not have my son. The devil will not have my son. Some of us say stop praying. We got to get back to that place. Hey, God. We're talking about fire. God is not going to come. He's not going to be able to come say that contaminated. He wants us to have a fresh anointing. We have to come before him with a new prayer and a new word to lift him up in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Time is winding up. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of people mocking the church. I'm tired of the church being used as a tool and a gimmick. These things of God are not to be played with. We are to honor God. We are to reverence Him. We don't play with the Holy Ghost. If you're ever getting a place and you feel like I'm getting with go ahead and sit yourself down. Tell somebody to take a sabbatical. But don't, if you have not been in the presence of God, never go before the people and try to present the kingdom. Because yes. it's not going to work. Even if you got the skills, the talent, and you got all the jazz and charisma, the enemy is watching. And every word that comes out of your mouth, we're going to try and use it from the regurgitate and say, oh, I got you now. You got to be praying out. If you're going to be in it, you got to be real about it. Amen. If you're going to serve the children of God, you got to live a pure holy life. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Yeah. Yeah. We got to stop playing with the things of God. We have to honor what He has given us. Shabbat, holy convocation. It's a that's an annual event where we come into the place and we say, "Whoo." Okay, God, I've given you my best. Okay, God, I'm coming with a new praise and a new offer. On that 50th day when Pentecost Sunday comes, we should already be ready to be hey. bounced off the fire hey. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Some of us stop dreaming. Some of us stop having visions because we got to get back in our rightful place with God. Look with me at Acts and my conclusion. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. And then I'm going to skip over to 16 through 19. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 16 But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass 
In the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. God he wants for us to get in the right mindset. Come on, saints. We got to get back in that place where we first received him. Yeah. We got to get back in that mindset where we understand that there is power in prayer. We got to get back in that mindset that when we speak in tongues, hey. demons will tremble. Yeah. See, sometimes you got people now, they just saying and they playing with it and they making it out of a joke and it yeah. means nothing. See, but the people of God, because we've been in our place, we've been talking to God. So when we come around, we're not just speaking in tongues hey. just to show up, but we're speaking in tongues with a purpose and a mean to change the atmosphere, to cause for a paradigm shift. We got to get that in the mindset where God and you is able to use us, where we have cleaned out ourselves. That's what that fasting does. It cleanses us out. It detoxifies us so that we're able to allow for the Spirit of God to freely flow on the inside. We're getting too caught up. We're getting too caught up. It's not about fashion. Not about fancy car. A big house. All of those are vanities. And they all will pass away. But we got to make sure that we have our affection set on the things of God. We have to make sure, okay, Lord, are the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart acceptable in your sight? Time is winding up. People keep, you know, oh, Lord, I, I, I know you went to the church, but I'm not into church. No, I'm not. I, I don't even like church. I know it's the words that we use. I like being a, a, amongst believers. Yes. I like being a, amongst the brethren and the sisters yes. that know how to praise you the Lord. Yes. I like to be around men and women of God that can look at you and say, I'm praying for you and I'm lifting you up and they need it. It's not just a cliche. Yes. I like being around men and women of God that when you when you when you talk to them and you start speaking, they they know how to get on one accord with you and you're both having a conversation yes. in the spirit. That's the kind of people I like to be around. The believers. Yeah, yeah. All these things where people get oh fascinated with oh the music. Guess I know we, we we gotta we gotta DJ. But sometimes we don't need no music because he's hot all by himself. She don't get hooked on that. Music is a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong. I guess it's a beautiful thing. But the spirit of God when He wants to do a work. Yeah. It's not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. Take the Lord. And when he's ready to do a work, and when he's ready to move, he don't need nothing but what he wants at that specific time. If it's a donkey, he wants that donkey open up your mouth and speak. If it's a mountain, he's going to say, look, I need for these people to understand and I've got mountain move. He don't need all this other man there. God is God. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men after me. We got to lift up the name of Jesus. We get holy convocation. We're dressed in white. Yeah. We need to Shabbat. We need to have the understanding. New offering. Fresh blessing. Fresh anointing. These things God has prepared for us. We're sitting here today, 2022, 20, June 5th. God knew this day was here before you and you were placed in your mother's womb. He knew he was going to be here. Yes, yes, he knew that. Yes. So we got to understand the mighty God we serve. That's why I say, what a mighty God. 
Wow. He said, see, because my mind, I have a great imagination. My mind, it can just keep spiraling and spiraling. When I start thinking about molecules and atoms, when I start thinking about compounds and how God put the salt in the earth, how the how the sea has a even a floor, there's a floor to the sea, and there's different dimensions and different stratus of the sky. When I start thinking, if my mind starts going, I can only say, How great thou art. And then for God to set up holy, holy festivities and holy days for us to celebrate. See, when you go to a party, you put on your best. When you go to a party, you come expecting. When you go to a party, you come with a, a gift. You come with an offering because you're expecting for a great thing to happen. Because why? Now we come together and we're on one accord. If you stop dreaming, if you stop having visions, come on and get back in your place in God. God is speaking to his people. There is, yes, revival is going to happen. Yes, it is. Revival is going to happen. But we as the people of God, we got to get it right. We as the people of God have to have a deeper understanding of the things that God has placed in this earth for us as his children. And how to use those tools. To manifest who he is here on earth. Now I know some people may say, oh, that's oh, that sounds like hope. No, it's not. God made the earth. The only reason why God is not in the earth is because sin has contaminated the earth. And if he was to come down here, it would totally blow up. Because yes. he's too divine yes. and he's too pure. Yes. So yes. he allows for the spirit of God, like Jesus said, I'm going to leave you the comforter. The comforter dwells on the inside of us. Why did God have to make his son come to earth? Once again, he couldn't do it. He had to put him in flesh form. So now we are in flesh form, but the spirit of God lives on the inside of us. That's how the spirit of God is able to maneuver throughout the earth. But if you keep quenching the spirit of God, if you keep keeping yourself where you're not allowing God to deliver you, some people don't want to be delivered. Well, some people just they feel good enough to just come to church on Sunday and that's it. Look, I'm in church on Sunday, pay my tithe, I'm good. That's it. Some people don't want to be delivered and set free. But those of us who have a mindset to really be true disciples. To really represent Christ in our lives. We understand what it means to give him our all. Yes. And that's all that I'm asking for those of you who are listening. Give him your all. You're going to try everything else. Yes. Why not try Jesus? Yes. For those of you who are celebrating Pentecost Sunday, don't 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 look at oh oh we going to dinner at the church or oh everybody in white. No, understand that this is holy convocation. Yeah. Yeah. That this is a holy time for us to honor our God with a new offering and with a new praise. Heavenly Father, we thank yes. you and we praise you for the word that has come forth. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are God of covenant. Lord, I thank you that you you love being in a relationship with those who accept you into their hearts and into their lives. So, Father, I pray that you give your people clarity and deeper and greater understanding as they walk the remainder of the days of their lives. Father God, let them not become complacent or stagnant, but Father, help them to continue to look to the hills from which come that help, knowing that their help is coming from you. Father, I pray that you would stir up that gift of prophecy. You said our handmaidens and our young men, they will prophesy. Lord, I pray that in this season and in this time, that you will raise up true prophets. Boys and girls of life, that's going to speak up. That's going to say what needs to be said without conviction because they know who you are. Father, I pray for those of us, oh God, who are seasoned, that you will revive the dreams and the visions so that we will be in sync and be on one accord. So that when we get together, we will feel your presence and your Holy Spirit suddenly will fall upon us with a fresh wind and with a fresh anointing. Lord, help us. Lord, I pray right now for those who have fallen by the wayside. You called them, oh God, to be ministers. And Lord, maybe they have made some error. But Lord, I pray that you would raise them up 
that you will cleanse them, oh God. That you will bring them back to the fold. Bring them into a place where they are intimate with you. This way, Father, they will understand that the Holy Spirit is there to guide and to lead to the truth. We thank you, Father, that every good thing you will not withhold from those of us who trust and believe in you. So, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus, you have blessed us to come together to celebrate this holy convocation. That, Father, the days to come, we will remember what has been taught. And when we enter in your presence, whether it's in our prayer closet or when it's time for us to come together, we will give you a new offering. And we will celebrate that you are the great God, the mighty God that we serve. We give you honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I ask for those of you who uh, wanted for their oil to be anointed, I want to explain what this means. Because I'm not a person about isms and schisms. I grew up in church and I saw a lot of things. As a preacher's kid, I, I saw a lot of things and some things I wish I didn't see. But I will tell you this, I thank God that I had teachers and mentors that taught me, whatever you see that's done wrong, don't repeat it, but rather do the opposite. So all of the isms and schisms, I see people doing all these little crazy things and tactics, I'm not into that. We pray over the oil because we're touching and agreeing. Your faith and my faith connecting together, we pray over the oil. So that whenever you are going through something that's a little bit difficult to get through, you'll be reminded that you had someone that touched and agreed and believed with you. Because whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Whenever we come together, we ask him, we get on one accord, things happen. So the oil is just a representation to remind us that when we are separate one from another, we can have something tangible to rely on to help us to just concentrate and think. I'm a teacher. We have visual learners. We have audio uh, learners. We have tactile learners. So with the audio, you get all three. You can see, you can feel it, and you can remember by hearing what the experience was when we prayed over the audio. It's not a hocus pocus or anything of that nature. It's just a statement and a representation to help us as we move through life. Another thing I would like to share as we move forward, praying over the oil. Those of you who are going to the next chapter in your life, God is moving things and God is shaping things. And some, some of us are holding on to the old. And some of y'all may get mad at me, but I'm not bringing anything old into the new. And I need for us all to have that mentality. God can't put, he's not going to put a fresh anointing in some old dirty garbage bag. I don't know about you. Somebody can cook a filet mignon. It can smell a great onions, peppers, seasoning, and you smell it cooking through the house. And you run down the steps and say, oh, I can't wait to eat this filet mignon. And the cook, whoever cooked it, put it on the lid of a garbage can. You're not going to eat that. I don't care how hungry you are. A garbage lid with all trash and smudges and dirt and grime on it. You're going to say, why did you serve me that? Well, well, it's the same thing with us. God wants to use us, but we got to make sure that we're clear and we're, we're cleaned out. We're swept out. So that when he gives us the new, the freshness, the new anointing, when he fills us up, we'll be able to function accordingly. See, you can't function accordingly when you put in your car... When you, they tell you every three months or every certain amount now, you got to get that oil changed. Because if that oil don't get changed, what happens? That engine going to crank up on you. It's the same thing with us spiritually. We got to constantly ask God for a fresh anointing. We have to ask for fresh oil, fresh oil, and fresh oil. And in order to get the fresh oil, you got to do your part. You got to fast, you got to pray, and you got to read that word. God has great things in store for each and every one of us. I don't care what anybody says. I've never been a person to try to do anything other than obey the voice of God to the best of my ability. And I tell you this, I have benefited from it. 
People may not know all of my stories. Some people just think, oh, she had a, she was born with a self silver spoon. I don't know. I've had some challenges, but I was taught to rely on God. He has seen me through. He has brought me over. And he has kept me. And these things I share with you because he has no respected person. And what he's done for one, he'll do for you, 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 and you. Amen? Amen. So let's come on. We're not going to take our day with this. Bring your oil for Can someone move this um, to the side for me, please? If you have your oil, please just take it out of the bag, whatever you have it in. Let's pray over it. And we are going to enjoy the rest of this Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. you are near, that you will never leave nor forsake us. Lord, when we get through those hard times and tribulations in our lives, let us remember, Father God, that you have brought us out and brought us over so many times. And whatever that situation may be at that time, it is no different because you are greater than any problems that we have. So, Father, as this, this oil is being anointed, oh God, I pray, Father God, that the attention will be put on you for those who are getting their oils anointed, Father, let them remember to always call upon you because you are a present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, Father, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
Lord God. For those of you who are tuning in, if you have uh, if it be olive oil, if it be frankincense and myrrh, whatever form of oil you want, it is blessed, it is used in another capacity. So if you want that right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever they have, Father God, to represent that fresh oil, that you would anoint it, that it would be used to help them to get through difficult times, that it would be used to bring forth healing in their bodies, minds, soul, and being. And Father God, let them always remember to call upon you, being the present help in the time of trouble, being Jehovah both for our healer, being Jehovah, John, our provider. Lord, we ask that you would anoint it and get the glory out of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope those of us who are here celebrating, yeah. hallelujah, that we feel good in our souls. Yes. Hallelujah. Before we leave, we're going to have communion because this is our first Sunday in the month. Let's get our communion prepared and immediately after communion, we will have benediction and we can go and enjoy the remainder of the day. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're prepared for communion. If you would just bear with us, those of you are home, if you have uh, juice, um, usually if you use grape juice, or if you have Packers, that's fine as well. But come on and let's commune together and let's remember what Jesus did for each and every one of us. He did something that no one else can do. He paid a price for our sins. He paid a price so that we can be redeemed, set free, and live life abundantly. So come on, be partakers. We're just waiting on our deaconesses. Get us together if our ministers can just line up behind us. Amen. Glory to God. This is a time of celebration. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask for. Prophet Jenkins to pray over the cup, and we're going to ask for our missionary charity to pray over the bread. Amen. And for those of you who are home, we usually read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at the 23rd verse to the end. Go ahead and read that, but it's all to remind us that we're supposed to always remember who Christ is, that he did something for us that no other person could ever do. It can't be repeated what he did. It's already done. The only thing we have to do is receive it. So I just admonish you to pray and to also read that word. Let us pray with the cup in the name. Father, in Jesus' name today, we are grateful to be able to be here to spend some more time to be able to share your body and your blood. Even as we have this communion with this fire, fresh fire service, we are grateful God for the word of today, God, that you prepared for us. We are grateful to bless our community service of today, especially in the blood. Amen. As we take a partake of this blood, God, we're going to all sickness and all diseases. Slow our life of body out of the direct in the name of Jesus. Fresh mind in this thing, fresh thoughts, fresh attitudes to be able to speak by right. fresh decision making, fresh attitudes in and towards one another. And of course, we love you, brother. And the blood of the devil lost his power and gives us the promise to live the holy life that you call for us to live. But we are expecting to move up now, God, because of the understanding and the knowledge through your word. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank, thank you for the blood, for the sacrifice you made. Thank you for yes. being able to take over every month, yes, every day, but for this particular occasion. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this bread, the symbolic of your body. We pray even now, Father God, that you move in a mighty way in our lives. Yes, let us not remember, Father, that, uh, that it was you that died yes, for each and every one of us, Father God. That we can live a life holy oh, yes, unto thank you. you. And Father God, we thank you today, God. We love you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
this come, let us remember the life, the death, the resurrection, yes. of course, the return yes. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also ask God to do a new thing. Yes. The fresh fire that was down for yes. us in yes. this word, let us carry it on down to the rest of the days. And let us remember to be stirred up and on fire. Let us be on the cusp of the way, waiting for God to use us and being ready yes. for when he comes. Amen? Amen. Say, eat and drink all of it. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. It will never, 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 never yes. lose this power. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on. Let's give him a prayer. He's on our way out. Hallelujah. Glory to his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you again for joining in with us on today. This holy convocation is a cross Sunday. We pray that the blessing of the Lord continue to make you rich, adding no sorrow to you. And we give you this. I am blessed. And I cannot be cursed. Because Jesus, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. We love you. Love you.